In this video, I am going to fetch cells and EPS data that is available on Screener's website. We are going to fetch that information into Google Sheet. For any script that we select from here, we can frame this URL. So if we hit that URL, we get this screener's page. So on this page, the data in which we are interested is available in this table. So with a simple trial and error, I have found that table number for this data is table number two. So first I get this whole information into Google Sheet using formula that I have written here. So it is import HTML. Then URL is value of this C4 cell. And the data that I am interested in is a table data. That is a query. And what is the table number? So table number is 2, which is this table. Once I hit enter key, I will be able to get that data into Google Sheet. Now next I am going to write individual query to get this information here to get this information here. So to frame those queries I need column numbers. So those column numbers I have written here. My data is starting from here. Uh, this will be column number 1 and in the same way I have written column number for, for all these columns. So data in which I am interested is in column number 13. So just remember that shortly we are going to write formula using that column number 13. And we want to do matching of the row for this sales plus and for EPS in rupees. So that information is in column number 1. So basically in the query that we are going to write, we are going to use this column number 1 and column number 13. So now let's see how to write that formula. So that is here. To get this sales data, we write this formula. Now instead of writing that sales plus in the matching, what I've done is that we have copied this value into this cell and we have copied this value into this cell. Whenever I frame query, I can refer this cell number. So now the formula is we do this database query operation where my data range is you can see here it is from G4 to S everything I am considering. So that is highlighted. So you can see that which data I am referring into this query formula. Then second argument is the query. So we write here select. Now what I am interested in is in column number 13. So I write here select column number 13 where column number 1 value column number 1 value is value that is written here. So basically this is going to do cross operation of this particular row and this particular column. So you will see that we will be able to get this information at this place. So this is the formula for getting sales data. In the same way I can get EPS data. I just copy and paste that formula here. But now one change I have to do in that formula is instead of comparing it with column 1 with D1, I am going to compare that column 1 value with E1. So that is the one change. The second change that I am doing is I don't want to write my formula here because when I am going to do tracking operation where I can do tracking of multiple scripts, then it won't be possible to have these tables, such tables in one row because this table is occupying multiple rows. I want to have this data in memory. So that is what I have done. Now in very simple way you can understand that if I want to replace this formula to have in memory data then what changes I have to do is just replace this data range by the formula that is present here. So I just copy this formula and I write it in place of this G4 to S. And that is what I have done here. You can see here. First parameter of query is my data. So that I am writing this formula. So now it is becoming dynamic. So for EPS even if I delete this. That information, that information will remain there. So you can see here. Here it is not available. 
basically i'm showing that how you frame formula initially how you can bring that data in memory by directly writing this import html in place of the data range that you are supplying to query now in the same way you can track multiple scripts by writing those formula here so you can see here i have written now those formula uh, no temporary data is required here we can track this information for all the scripts now one important thing is that for column number 1 i can refer it in a hard coded manner but for column number 13 which may not always contain march 2024 data for some script if data is available it may represent march 2025 data so as an exercise you can find out number 13 as the column number for a particular quarter for example you can you, you need to search for march 2024 or basically whatever you write here you need to search for that into this row and the formula will return value 13 and then we can use that 13 number here dynamically using string concatenation operator so let me know in the comment section how this video was useful to you thanks for watching and happy learning we'll see you in some another interesting video